As we learn more about Avengers Endgame, Marvel's skillful foreshadowing becomes clearer. The MCU has been preparing us for this grand climax for years already, we just didn't know it. From early title drops to ominous plot cues, we're cataloging the ways the MCU has been building to its endgame. The phrase Endgame has appeared in the MCU long before Avengers Endgame. The first time was in a line spoken by Tony Stark during Avengers Age of Ultron back in 2015. The line comes up when several of the Avengers criticize Stark for creating Ultron. Thor is so enraged by Tony's actions that he even picks him up by the throat before Captain America talks him down. In response, Tony launches into a tirade about how unprepared they are for a real threat from an alien enemy. We're the Avengers. We can bust arms dealers all the live long day, but that up there, that's... That's the endgame. As it turns out, Stark is more right than anyone in that moment realizes. When Stark uses the phrase endgame while gesturing towards space, he's foreshadowing the showdown with Thanos. The more recent reference to endgame came during Avengers Infinity War, when Doctor Strange uses the Time Stone to view possible outcomes of the battle with Thanos. Despite seeing millions of different potential futures, Strange is only able to find one where the Avengers win. Once the Sorcerer Supreme knows the path to the one future scenario in which Thanos is defeated, his every move is a calculated decision to bring about that future. This means that when Strange willingly exchanges the Time Stone for Thanos for Stark's life in Avengers Infinity War, he has a reason for giving it up. When a devastated Tony asks why he gave in to Thanos, Strange has a simple answer. We're in the endgame now. In other words, Avengers Endgame has been a long time coming. During the press conference scene midway through the first Iron Man film back in 2008, Tony Stark mentions how he never got to say goodbye to his father. I never got to say goodbye to Dad. I never got to say goodbye to my father. Losing his parents so suddenly at such a young age left a psychological scar that Tony never truly healed from. This trauma came up directly during Tony's early scene in Captain America Civil War. Tony creates an entire virtual simulation with which he can relive the last day he saw his parents alive. In the simulation, Tony's mother urges him to say goodbye to his father. You know what's about to happen. Say something. If you don't, you'll regret it. Tony clearly never moved on from how he treated his father the last time he saw him, and he's obviously always wanted a chance to say goodbye. During his time travel escapades in Endgame, Tony finally gets his wish. In Avengers Age of Ultron, several of the Avengers attempt to lift Thor's hammer, Mjolnir. Even though nearly every hero can't get it to move, the hammer actually shifts when Steve Rogers tries to lift it. The movement is so subtle that none of the other Avengers seem to notice it, but Thor sure does. That small detail is why Thor is the only one in the film and in the audience that isn't surprised when Cap finally wields the hammer against Thanos in Avengers Endgame. Thor knew that Captain America was worthy to lift Mjolnir all along. When Steve and Tony got in each other's face back when the Scepter was influencing the Avengers in the first film, they had a bitter exchange that foreshadowed both of their futures. The only thing you really fight for is yourself. You're not the guy to make the sacrifice play. A hero? Like you? You're a laboratory experiment, Rogers. Everything special about you came out of a bottle. Both these assumptions are torn apart during the events of Endgame. When they first meet, Cap doesn't believe that Tony has what it takes to lay his life on the line for others. But in Avengers Endgame, Tony sacrifices himself to save half of the life in the entire universe. Meanwhile, when Steve is able to lift Mjolnir during Avengers Endgame, it means the hammer has deemed him worthy of possessing Thor's power. The fact that Captain America is considered worthy enough to wield the power of a god proves that Steve Rogers is a hero without a super soldier serum. Toward the start of Avengers Infinity War, Tony mentions a dream he had to Pepper as they're walking together in Central Park. I dreamt. We had a kid. So real. We named him after your eccentric uncle. Uh, what was his name? Right. Morgan. Morgan. Although Tony gets the gender wrong in his dream, this scene foreshadows Tony becoming a father when we see him again in Avengers Endgame. Morgan Stark is actually a character from the Iron Man comics, but it's neither Pepper's uncle nor her daughter with Tony. Instead, Morgan Stark is actually Tony Stark's cousin who becomes involved in various supervillain plots. Although naming Tony Stark's daughter after his nefarious cousin might seem like a strange easter egg, it shows how much the filmmakers still respect their characters' humble comic book beginnings. Throughout the Iron Man films, Pepper is always making sure Tony is getting enough sleep. In Iron Man 2, she tells him to go to bed after he gets out of control at his birthday party. Okay. You're out of control, it's time gorgeous. To go to bed. It's time. In Iron Man 3, Tony Stark's insomnia isn't coming from an interest in his work or too much partying. It's because he's terrified of what dangers are lurking in the galaxy. But honey, I can't sleep. You go to bed, I come down here, I do what I know. I tinker. 
Even the first Iron Man had a brief line in the original script where Pepper is surprised to see that Tony has been focused on his armor instead of sleeping. With all of those moments of Tony's inability to actually rest, Pepper's final words to Tony when she tells him he can rest carry even more meaning. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about the MCU are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.